Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Dorian and Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, September 5th, 11 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. I've downloaded the most recent IR two kilometer satellite imagery. And what I want you to see here is off the port of Southport. Here's Wilmington. That's where the eye is now. It is re intensifying. Look at this explosion in activity and a re, uh, an eye wall recirculation here. So the eye wall has broken down and is now reforming as it moves out into this open water here before it hits Hatteras. It may re intensify back to Cat 3. We're going to have to watch this very closely. Look at the band explode to the north here and the east. This is going to be pushing major rain here up on the Carolinas. Storm surge expected up in the Delmarva, all the way up to Massachusetts. We're going to be covering that. But this storm is far from over. Keep calm. It's boom time. The sky turned purple over Florida as Hurricane Dorian passed by. It's true. The eruptions from Chivalution, many others have caused the sky to turn Prince Purple. Amy Pope, Lantham watched the sky turn a beautiful, vibrant purple on Wednesday from her balcony in Jacksonville. Gorgeous. Hurricane Dorian becomes a Carolina problem with fierce lashing of the coast. We showed you the video. We're going to get back to it. Here's the latest Dorian storm surge warnings. Almost all of the coast of Wilmington all the way up here toward Hatteras, and it gets less intense. The inner bays are the major problem. And as if you come up the coast here towards Delaware, all of the Atlantic Bay, all the way up through the Delaware, all the way up into New Jersey. Heads up. Bridgeport down, northern Long Island. And the storm surge map continues all the way up through Maine. It's insane. So keep an eye on this map. Links will be below. And you'll be able to see every six hours the latest storm surge levels are re-updated here on the map. And it's looking pretty thick here down Wilmington North. Over six feet of storm surge expected. So hunker down. Hurricane Dorian Advisory 51 showing maximum sustained winds at 100 miles per hour, Cat 2. All it has to do is bump up to 115, which it looks like it may be doing. The next flyby will determine the maximum sustained winds, and we'll see where we're at. This is the 11 p.m. Eastern Advisory. Take heed. Here you're looking at the 2-meter... It's the two kilometer IR. So this is just 2,000 feet above the surface. And you can see this major explosion of intensification and then this outer band explode, which means this baby is intensifying before our very eyes. So heads up there. These bands are going to continue to move in here and pummel Hatteras and then north up towards the Delmarva. So you're looking at 5, 10, 15, 20 inches of rain. And we just got a new, a few new images coming in here. As this eye wall re-intensifies, look at it's broken down and watch it just get circular there with more dark maroons in a full circle. Holy macaroni. Kids, this is boom time. Heads up. Fast moving fire near Marietta, not Georgia. Grows to 1,400 acres overnight. We're talking L.A. Let's take a look. Let's see what they have to say. This is the Marietta Police Department. This area is now under mandatory evacuation. Please gather your items from your residence and leave the area. I was actually going to an orientation and I like saw that there was smoke and I was like that looks really close to my house so then I like called my mom my mom was like I don't know like I haven't been home and so I immediately rushed home and saw fire trucks all over the place saw like flames
Looks like a pretty bad situation out there. We're going to be keeping a close eye on it. Heads up. Could be a snowy winter for Dallas-Fort Worth. That's Texas. Here's what the new Farmer's Almanac says. Yeah, you could. it's going to be pleasant. It's going to be pleasant. Yep, and there's not much snow. So you're, you're going to be fine. Multiple all-time low temperature records fall in the far north Queensland, Australia. Look how purple. That's like 16 below normal. On the back of the myriad Aussie sites averaging their coldest ever August, the month of September has started off historically nippy too, particularly FNQ, whatever that means. With report after report emerging of all-time low temperature records being busted and thrusted into the central areas of nowhere land. According to official data from the bomb, yesterday, September 4th, was the coldest September morning since records began in Cairns, Queensland. Now, the mercury dipped to just 10.8 C at the city's airport, busting the previous record of 11 C set back in 1948. In Sefil, a town locally in the Kasseri coastal region of the FNQ, suffered its coldest September morning since 1990, with a reading of 11.3 C, literally bursting the nipples out of their shirts at 52 F. If you can F it. Now, this new milestone were also set at other various communities in the nearby Mackay region, where they were slipping shrimps on the barbie just to keep warm, as the mercury there too recently tumbled to all time record low levels for the month of September. Well, now we expect the cold conditions to continue for the next few days here, uh, said the bomb, Jess Gardner. In fact, in the next 10 days, it looks incredibly chilly, and we might need to slip some more of them prawns on the barley. Eyeing further ahead still, the latest GFS are running, picking up on a truly brutal Antarctic blast across all of the continent, which appears to sweep the entire f***ing place come mid-September. That will be a September for the bomb to remember. Greenland forecast to be as much as 16 C below average for the majority of September as well. It's like a popsicle festival. Did you get that? Do you know there's a huge storm re-intensifying off the coast of South, uh, North Carolina right now? While Greenland freezes its arse off. We'll get to those numbers on the ice sheet. 5.2 earthquake in Lake Taupo. Earthquakes in the Taupo region often associated with existing faults caused by the spreading of the Taupo volcanic zone due to large-scale tectonic processes. Whew. Heads up. There are the quakes right through the center of the lake, which could go boom. Seismic update. Many quakes of note, all at spreading regions. Check out the entire Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Multiple quakes and aftershocks here. 5.5 in the North Ridge. Reactivity in the Norwegian Sea. Activity of 5.6 in the Carlsberg Ridge. Holy sh Kilauea going boom boom. Are you picking it up? We just put it down. Not only that, people near Oregon were shitting their pants as well. No tsunami warning, but we're watching. Yes, we're watching. Worldwide Volcano News Update. Ducona. Volcanic ash to 6,000. Popo Reventador Sangue API Aso. Kiss it. Popo Puffin to 20,000. Pass that. And take a look at the dirty. We're just going to go down. We're, we're going to go get it. Let's get it. Chevalouche. Look at the dirt. And look at how gray it is near Chevalouche. Holy macaroni. Purple sunset much. Black bear kills American woman in rare attack in Canada. Officers found a bear standing over Catherine's sweat, Mueller's body, and shot the animal on Red Pine Island. This is International Falls, Minnesota, by Associated Press. Black bear killed a Minnesota woman on a secluded island in Canadian waters in an attack that experts call f***ing rare. Catherine Sweat Mueller, apparently a billionaire who owns an entire region, 62 of Maple Plain was staying with her parents on a remote cabin on Red Pine Island in Rainy Lake when she was killed. Apparently, she went out early in the morning to take a walk 
and was eaten. Yeah. New study finds vegetarians and vegans are total pricks. But not only that, they're at higher risk of stroke. Your meat. <clears throat> Five surprising scientific facts about Earth's climate. Are you prepared? Buckle your seatbelts. Number one, the climate has always changed. Mm -hmm. I'm a paleoclimatologist. I can agree with this. All proxy temperature data sets reveal that there have been cyclic changes in climate over the past 10,000 years. There's not a single climate scientist who denies this. It's established fact. And here is just some of the GISP2 data that we use regularly on the show to prove that. You're looking at the last 4,000 years, and you can see one, two, three, four, five major climate cycles easily. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 smaller scale cycles. Yeah. Take a look. End of the empire. So after it goes real big, here, end of the empire. Real big there, end of the Romans. Here, end of the Minoans. Right here, end of us. Boom! Fact. It's amazing. These are five surprising facts. And that was like fact one. Okay, let's get back to the facts. Fact number two. Temperature increase in the past was not caused by humans. Yeah, these up and downs that are regular and periodic have nothing to do with you. It's not you. It's not CO2. Because CO2 has pretty much been coming down and up as a response to the temperature. You heard it here first. The Arctic and Antarctic are doing better than ever. Yes, you read that right. The 10,000-year Holocene paleoclimatological climatological record reveals that both the Arctic and Antarctic are in some of their healthiest states. Polar bears and other species are not dying. In fact, they're eating people at record rates up in Nunavut. But they won't let them kill them because the alarmists have convinced them that they're dying. When actually the humans are dying because they're being eaten by bears. Carbon dioxide is not a temperature control knob. It's a response to temperature. Hundreds of years after the temperature rises, the carbon dioxide follows. This is the first time in history we've been making carbon dioxide that exceeded that level. And in the last four years, temperature has dropped a half a degree C. Record temperature drop during record CO2 rise. The exact opposite of the global warmest's model and their purported mechanism for global warming. I, I pretty much just broke that all down. A bond event right now. All of the solar cycles are coming together. As a paleoclimatologist, I don't want to scare you. I want to prepare you. We're at the 22-year Hale cycle, the 179-year barycentric cycle, or the grand solar minimum cycle. The 1,450-year bond cycle, or super grand solar minimum cycle. The 23,000-year precessional cycle, which is Milankovitch, and on and on. And we've just passed the 100,000-year ice age cycle, which means after this warming ends, it's cold for 80,000 years, baby. You want to know more about the little ice age and the last barometric cycle, or grand solar minimum, or super grand solar minimum, Check out this paper. It came out years ago, but the information is the same because it's facts. Sea ice thickness, another fact, has turned the cost, but is now increasing. The melt season is over. 
The Northwest Passage was never open, not for a single day. The only place you could get through the Arctic this summer was right here. No el nowhere else. And ice will now continue to build to record proportions as we enter one of the record coldest winters in decades. Here we are at Greenland, where we can see mass ice gain at one gigatons per day, which is why the mainstream is not reporting on Greenland. Now, a 1,247-foot killer asteroid will skim Earth tonight. Here's everything you need to know. NASA has detected an asteroid almost as big as the Empire State Building that's on a near collision course with Earth. It's going to skim by. We're talking about 2019 GT3. Good times. Having a diameter of 1,247 feet. If that hit the ocean, holy. The resulting explosion from the asteroid impact would produce enough energy to completely level a small city. Like Omaha, let's say, Nebraska. Fortunately, 2019 GT3 is not in danger of hitting Earth during its upcoming approach, which brings it about... 0 0.04996 AUs away, which is 4.6 million miles. But the fear mongers are going to glom onto it. Now, you do have to worry about this large object dragging shit nearby. So there is a tiny 1% or less probability that it's bringing something with it that may hit our planet. Heads up. A lot of you have been sending me uh, emails about ripples and rollers that appear in the sky that are opposite direction and they come together and they mesh. These rollers, ripples, and vortices have been known since a paper that came out in 1976 which formed the hypothesis of much, most of my sedimentological work and my interest in the sky and the earth. As cosmic rays increase, these rollers, ripples, and vortices will reveal themselves in ways that will make the layman believe that something is afoot. It looks as if there's energy waves coming from Antarctica or Harp or something, but there, this has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the same patterns in the atmosphere that happen in shallow water. The same patterns that cause rollers, ripples, dunes, and vortices on Earth in water are up in the sky. If you want to know more about it, I'm getting the full PDF for you. Well, we just have the abstract right now, so check it out. Something strange is happening in the Fermi bubbles. This is the, the Taurus right here in the middle. This is the key to it all, and we're getting to the center of the matter. Two giant blobs remain mysterious, except they're not. They're the positive and negative anode and cathode of the general state of everything from the atom all the way up to the galaxy, to the universe. It is the nature of matter. Electromagnetic. It's electric, folks. And it's coming to the mainstream. Hope you got something out of the video. Share this with like-minded people. If you're in South Carolina or North Carolina, get safe. I hope you have supplies because they've all run out.